dome out from the park and into your home. Rainbow, rainbow. Good morning. Good afternoon. Or good evening, Rainbow Rhythm. Ers. We are back on the show where we look beyond the rainbow and into our community of musical theater. theater. I'm Robin Quintana. And I am Emily Meadows. Your Rainbow Rhythms hosts. And previously on Rainbow Rhythms. We had the chance to speak to Winnipeg stars that are dominating the stages of Broadway in New York City. So don't forget to check that out. And on today's episode, we got the wonderful opportunity to connect with artists providing services to make theater more accessible for disabled artists and audience members. Our first guest of the day is an American Sign Language to English interpreter. ASL is a language that serves as the predominant sign language of deaf and hard of hearing communities in the United States and Canada. He recently worked as the ASL to English interpreter of Rainbow Stage's production of The Wizard of Oz. Let us now welcome Kevin Klein. All right, we are here with Kevin Klein. Welcome to Rainbow Rhythms. Thank you, Robin. Um, I just wanted to start off with um, who are you and what do you do? Well, I've been an interpreter for 30 years, actually just slightly over 30 years as of June. And so going back, you know, 32 plus years ago, I was actually working in a different, completely different uh, business. A deaf person came in and I saw them kind of working with a person, but it looked like there was some frustration going on. So at that point in time, I decided to take some ASL classes. With every level that I took, the instructors kept asking if I was going to become an interpreter. So I applied, and at the time, it was a two-year program at Red River Community College. And I got in, and I graduated uh, in 1992, and I've been working as an interpreter ever since. That's amazing. Certainly theater, music, uh, you know, has played a big part in my, in my life as a person who then became an interpreter and you are trained as a generalist. Um, but I interpret in the community, so I do things from medical to police to legal to theater to university to all of those things. Rainbow Stage and other places that I, that I have worked with and for over the last, you know, 30 years um, have been very typically open to, you know, working working with an interpreter and sort of deferring to those of us who do the job, right, as the experts. Things such as, you know, where interpreters are placed and lighting and, you know, that we're just not off to the side somewhere. What was that process like for you, um, being the ASL interpreter? As the interpreter, I'm playing all of those parts. It's not that, you know, like Dorothy memorizes Dorothy's lines and, you know, the lion memorizes his and, you know, those kinds of things. We are all of those characters. It's not just about the sign, but it may Maybe about some dancing sort of that's very similar to what's happening on stage because the person is taking the deaf person uh, or hard of hearing person is taking that in visually right so they may be looking a little bit away from the stage sometimes depending on where we're located mm -hmm. and you want to make sure that they have uh, you know a very immersive um, equal experience to everybody else that's in the audience I'm interpreting music, like I'm kind of dancing along, I indicate what kind of instrument is being played. And, you know, if there's sort of a guitar solo, you know, I kind of do the kind of air guitar a little bit there too, right? Mm -hmm. That really does give anyone who's using our service that holistic sort of experience. All right, Kevin, would you be able to give us an example of an interpretation of Somewhere Over the Rainbow? Absolutely, Robin. My pleasure. Wow, what a beautiful interpretation of Over the Rainbow. And now a word from our sponsors. Up next, we speak with the choreographer and director of Manitoba Possible's All Abilities Dance Group. Manitoba Possible, formerly known as the Society of Manitobans with Disabilities. Speaking with us today is Brenda Gorlick. 
Well, I am joined by Brenda Gorlick, singer, yeah, singer, actor, dancer, choreographer, teacher, director extraordinaire. And I approached Manitoba Possible and said, can we start a dance group? I had to learn spatial relationships in a different way. So I take up less space as a vertical dancer. In a, in a chair, I take up more space. So mm-hmm. even that I had to relearn. And then we've since expanded from the adult program only to a youth program. The in point is a love of music. Mm-hmm and the passion to express yourself. But I've been very, very thrilled that Manageable Possible has always made it possible yeah. for anybody that wants to join, to join. There is so much dance that happens between, behind the eyes. Mm-hmm. It's like joyous. I can tell if somebody's dancing with me. Yeah. Because it's, their eyes are just like, <sighs> that's where the passion is. And that might be their mobility. I think dance is part of your DNA and people just have to release that. It's like we, all, we dance because we breathe. I think that's what we need to do kind of as the human race, discover what everybody's strength is and then capitalize on it. And I think we are all waking up to that, which is why, you know, you guys are doing this programming, right? All access. Well, Brenda, thank you so much for coming and chatting with me and telling me all about this. Oh, you're so welcome. Really wonderful. Great to chat with you. Yeah. Wow, that was truly moving. To get involved with Manitoba Possible and the All Abilities Dance Group, visit www.manitobapossible.ca. And now we turn to our field correspondent, Quabin Rintana, for the weather. It is wet. Up next is a member of Vocal Image Ensemble Winnipeg. View was created through Sick and Twisted Theater Company and offers audio description services. These services describe key visual elements happening on screen or stage to help audiences with vision loss follow the story. To tell us more is Jack Mayer. Hello Rainbow Rhythms viewers. I'm joined by my friend Jack here. And Jack is an audio descriptor. Is that your official Uh, title? Yeah, yeah, live audio describer. Live audio describer and for theater. Mm -hmm. And you do that here in Winnipeg, yes? Yeah, that's right. Live audio description is basically the process of describing the important visual elements of a piece of theater or dance, really any sort of performance or event, uh, for people who are blind or low vision. So in 2018, um, Debbie Patterson, who is the artistic director of Sick and Twisted Theater, which is a great theater company here in Winnipeg uh, focused on uh, arts around disability, um, they secured funding to get a training workshop. And then the 10 of us who took that workshop basically founded VIEW coming out of that workshop. One of the tricky parts about description is rule number one, you can't describe over the dialogue. Right. Because that would just be so overwhelming for the listener that it's going to hinder rather than help them connect with the story. It's rare that we would want to describe something on the fly, but the last project that we did description for was Outside Joke. I was, yeah. The improvised musical. I was exactly thinking of Outside Joke and their improvised musical. That was hard. That was very hard. (laughs) We've had, you know, four years now of working in a variety of circumstances. Mm -hmm. We worked through COVID, so we got a lot of experience describing pre-recorded and live stream shows. And since we've we've done live shows, we've done improv, we've done Shakespeare, we've done dance, dances its own, you know, ball of worms to describe. It's it's a super fun challenge. We have these microphones, they're sort of handheld and they have this um, rubber seal on them so you can press them against your face and it muffles your voice to those around you. Okay. Because we're sitting in the theater doing this live, right? right? So we don't want people like, you know, you know, being Stop distracted by us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, you're supposed to, it's your job. Okay, yeah. I understand. Um, so we have those microphones and they're connected to a like little radio transmitter. And then the patrons who are using our services, they get a um, receiver that's connected to an earpiece. And okay. they wear the earpiece on their ear. Uh, just just goes over one ear so that they mm-hmm. can still hear the show as well as the description. Also, just knowing what to describe and what not to describe. Uh, so, for example, description can quickly get overwhelming if you do it in sort of a, a play-by-play style, like a mm-hmm. sports commentator. You have to know sort of what to focus on and what to leave behind because mm-hmm. it can it can if you try to describe everything in as rich detail as possible. Uh, it can quickly become like super, super overwhelming. One of the things that I love most about doing this audio description is that every piece, every event or performance that you describe is like a very unique puzzle. 
it's a very unique mm -hmm. challenge. You know, if you're doing something dialogue heavy, it's where do I fit the description in and how do I make it so concise but still help the story be told? If you're doing dance, it's like, my my goodness, what do I choose to describe? Mm -hmm. It's a pretty fun thing to be doing and it's rewarding as well. We've gotten mm -hmm. a lot of positive feedback from from people who have, uh, who have used our services and have, oh, have really, really goodness. enjoyed it. So let's talk about the performers who are running around acting as the wind. You want to stay within the world of the play that you're describing. So how I wouldn't want to describe this would be to say, you know, three actors dressed in X, Y, Z come onto the stage whirling and twirling and begin to disassemble the set. That's what we're seeing from a theatrical point of view, but that's not what's happening in the world of the play at all. What's happening in the world of the play is Dorothy's home is being torn apart by a tornado. If I were to just say, Dorothy's home is getting torn apart by a tornado, then the listener might go, okay, but how are they doing that? It's a very fine balance between describing the theatrical elements and describing what's happening in the story. So when we do description, we, do, we, we split it into two parts. We have the action description, which happens during the show live. We narrate the, the important physical movements and visual elements, but we also do a pre-show description. So 10 minutes before the show starts, we talk about um, the costumes, the set, if there are any interesting conventions, like theatrical conventions that the show is using. And so during the pre-show description, I might say that the tornado is represented by these actors who are dressed in these, you know, amazing wispy wind costumes. And they're, they, they sort of come in and, and act as a tornado in this sort of choreographed ensemble way. They all flee the stage in terror as wind begins to sweep through the property. The wind leaps and dances. So you can say something like the wind leaps and dances because, you know, if you, if you sort of anthropomorphize the idea of the wind, in your mind the wind can leap and dance. These people who are representing the wind are literally leaping and dancing, right? Dorothy cowers in terror as the fence posts are ripped out of the ground and twirl through the air. She crawls into her home and cowers on the floor as the wind continues to strip apart her home, board by board. The entire fence is wrenched out of the ground. The wind intensifies, and more and more of it starts to sweep around the house as Dorothy is all alone, cowering on the floor, covering her head in fear. But that's the gist of what you want to do, is stay within the world of the play, um, focus on what is happening in the environment and what the focal point is and the character, right? Like I kept going back to Dorothy because there's all this chaos happening, but the reason that it matters is because Dorothy is in the center of it and how is it affecting her? Wow, I was blown away by that audio description. To learn more about VIEW and to stay updated for their next audio described performances, visit them at www.sickandtwisted.ca slash describers. Now let's check out what's happening at Rainbow HQ. AKA Rainbow Stage Headquarters. Um, Rainbow Rams, Rainbow Speaks, Rainbow Stage. And we're now reaching our last guest of the day. We had the opportunity to sit down with one of Winnipeg's deaf artists. To share more about her experience, we have Joanna Hawkins. All right, we are here with Joanna Hawkins. Welcome to Rainbow Rhythms. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Um, just to start off, who are you? Um, what do you do? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, of course, sure. So my name is Joanna, Joanna Hawkins. So I'm a deaf actor. I actually grew up in Poland and I moved here. And so I just started uh, falling in love with acting. And then all of a sudden later, I got uh, involved in 100 Decibels. It's a deaf mime group here in Winnipeg. What began your journey? Like, how did you how did you get to this point in your career? Yeah, I actually was born hearing. I wasn't born deaf, but at age three, I got an infection and I lost my hearing. So I still remember some sounds from way back then. And I did learn how to sign from when I was born because my parents were deaf. So I grew up trying to lip read here. And then my family all, uh, you know, got together on holidays. I think it was Christmas time here. Uh, like we'd get together and then for Easter as well. Everyone would be talking, saying all sorts of stories. And this is me sitting here because it's really hard to lip read to follow all the conversations of each individual talking. I would get such a headache here. It was very difficult to focus. And so I actually ended up watching a lot of TV. So there was a show called Mr. Bean. 
And I just thought that was amazing. I know I could actually understand what he was doing based off of his actions. It showed me how I can act and show that language. I had gone to University of Manitoba and I wanted to uh, go into performing arts. Unfortunately, that student advisor who I had been speaking to here was not supportive and they said that I had to pick another career. I didn't really know how to advocate for myself at that time. I went with something else and I was really devastated by that. At the University of Winnipeg, there was a mine group and they had hired a teacher, plus they also had hired an interpreter. Everyone there was deaf and they could learn mime. And I just fell in love with that. You know, it's uh, like physical, you know, movement. There's like comedy here. And I just felt like that dream kind of came back got involved in all sorts of different things. There was the festivals, I got invited to different organizations, different places to perform, and it just grew from that. You know, I really would love to work with hearing people more and kind of just, you know, show that deaf people are capable of doing anything as well. Educating hearing people about deaf people, their capability, their language, and their culture. Don't give up, <laughs> don't give up. Just keep going. You don't have to be different from hearing people, but never give up on your dreams. You know, it's our life. There are obstacles that happen here. We just have to navigate through. And do you have any future projects coming up? It's called Antigone. That's through the Sick and Twisted Theatre Group. It's going to be deaf and hearing actors as well. I'm quite excited about that. I really am excited to start that. Thank you so much. We are so happy that you were here to be with us today. And now we will go back to the studio. And that seems to be all the time we have for today, folks. If you liked what you saw, make sure to hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe. Please join us next episode where we sit down with Hermione from Harry Potter and Matilda to see who has stronger powers. Until next time, I'm Robin Quintana. And I'm Emily Meadows. My smelly armpits! And this is... Rainbow, Rainbow Rhythms. Rhythms. Thanks for coming along. We'll see you back here before too long. Rainbow Rhythms.